I'm Rick Sturko of the STS-117 crew. You're watching NASA TV. From Launch Complex 39 at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, this is Shuttle Launch Control at T minus three hours and holding. We are now in the final six hours of the countdown for the launch of Atlantis on mission STS-117, the 21st mission for construction of the International Space Station. The countdown is being controlled from firing room four at the Launch Control Center. And right now we are on schedule for liftoff at 7.38 p.m. Eastern Time. STS-117 is planned to last 11 days with two possible extension days. Landing is currently planned to occur on Tuesday, June 19th at 2.44 p.m. Eastern Time. This is the 118th launch of the Space Shuttle program, the 28th launch of Space Shuttle Atlantis, and the 19th flight to the International Space Station. Astronauts have been living continuously on the space station now for the last six and a half years. We're going now into the breakfast and the dining room. We see our crew. Here we have uh, Clay Anderson seated at the end of the table. He's going to the space station to uh, replace Sonny Williams. Uh, sitting next to him is uh, MS4, uh, Jim Riley, our EV-1 for STS-117. Uh, seated next to Jim is uh, Danny Olivas. Uh, Danny's going to be the MS-3 and uh, EV, EV-2 for the uh, mission. There's uh, Steve Swanson. He's the MS-2 and another one of our spacewalkers. Sitting next to him is uh, Pat Forrester. And at the other end of the table, we have uh, Colonel Lee Archambault and uh, Colonel Rick Sturko, our PLT and commander. And uh, at this point, they're about to have lunch, I assume. Yes, sir, they are. Uh, they've been up for a few hours now, and they're going to uh, have a meal and then uh, proceed to the suit room to uh, get suited up after their weather briefing. And here we are in the suit of rum. Uh, Dex, can we tell who we got there? Yeah, that's uh, the commander. That's Rick Sturko and uh, the pilot. Colonel Lee Archambault getting his uh, boots laced up there. Lee's uh, the pilot. He's also one of the, uh, the space station robotic arm operators. That looks like uh, Pat Forrester, the MS-1, uh, for the flight. He'll go up, uh, go uphill and uh, do the entry on the flight deck, sitting behind the pilot. Pat's a retired uh, Army colonel. And there's Clay Anderson. Clay's. Uh, MS-5 for the uh, ascent portion of the flight, and uh, he's gone up to the space station uh, to replace uh, Sonny Williams, who's coming home uh, on this flight. Clay will come home on STS-120 in October. Looks like he's excited and ready to go, doesn't it? <laughs> Clay is one of my classmates and uh, became an astronaut with me in 1998. There's uh, Jim Riley. Jim's uh, EV-1 for the flight. He'll take part in two of the spacewalks and then uh, be the uh, IV coordinator for the third spacewalk. Jim's also a Navy reservist. And at uh, one point he was the, uh, I think he told me he was the oldest ensign in the Navy. There's uh, Danny Olivas. Uh, Danny, uh, also from the 98 astronaut class, is uh, the MS-3 for the flight. He's on two of the spacewalks with Jim Riley. And uh, I know he's excited and ready to go as well. We've been waiting a long time for this. I hooked up there, what's, uh, what's connected to the helmet? Yeah. Uh, Steve is uh, doing his final pressurization checks. This is Steve Swanson, the MS-2 for the flight, and also one of the spacewalkers. And he's doing his final uh, pressurization checks. The, the suit is a pressurized suit, and we want to make sure there aren't any leaks in it. And the helmet is an integral, integral part of that. And so they uh, close it up and do final pressure checks and also make sure the communications gear works while it's pressurized.
This is shuttle launch control. T minus two hours, 55 minutes, nine seconds and counting. We see our STS 117 flight crew is now leaving the suit up room. Dex, uh, what are they thinking right now? Oh, they're just real excited. They're ready to, to go. They're ready to get strapped into the vehicle. Um, and uh, they're concentrating on the mission. Um, as you can see, you get the flight crew and uh, the chief astronaut, Steve Lindsay, and one of the insertion techs and management personnel are on the elevator with them. And they'll take that down to the first floor and uh, head out in just a few minutes. And here comes the crew. Rick Sturko and Lee Archambault uh, lead the crew out. And there's uh, Steve Swanson and Pat Forrester. And in the back row, Daniel Levis, Jim Riley, and there's Clay Anderson. Those suits are quite warm, and uh, inside the Astro van is nice and air conditioned, and they've got some liquid cooling lines that they can hook up to and, uh, and stay cool uh, inside the suits until they get out to the pad. There's uh, astronaut Jerry Ross and uh, Steve Lindsay and Mike Bloomfield, our uh, Deputy Flight Crew Operations Director, is going to join them on the Astro van there. Looks like uh, the commander has ent entered the uh, crew module now. This uh, view is provided by a camera that's uh, installed uh, by the astronaut support personnel there, and it's kept in the in, a, in the uh, crew module uh, just until just before hatch closure. So Mike's going to help uh, help CJ into his seat. So this view is uh, in the commander's side window, George, looking across the uh, the flight deck. And uh, here we see uh, CJ laying on his back, looking, uh, he's looking forward uh, through the uh, forward windows. Mike, uh, Mike is standing on the aft windows. We have some hard platforms that we put in place on those windows so that he can support, it can support his weight while he's uh, helping the crew get strapped in and finishing the final checks. You can see that he's got a headset on and he can communicate with the crew, but also with personnel here in the firing room, the NTD and the, and the uh, orbiter test conductor for any switches that need to be moved after the crew gets uh, strapped in. George, we've got a view here from a mid-deck camera that's, uh, that's attached to the mid-deck wall over on the uh, starboard or the right side of the vehicle. And you're looking toward the hatch here. So Jim's uh, entering the vehicle, and he's walking along a, a piece of fabric that we stretch out. Uh, we call it the trampoline. And uh, it allows you to walk across the, uh, the mid-deck there without stepping on any bags or any other gear. So now Jim's taking his seat. And uh, Mike Thompson will help him get strapped in as well. OTC, OVCC. And uh, George, this view is the another camera that uh, on the flight deck. It's been moved over to the pilot side now, and uh, we can see uh, Lee Archambault uh, getting into his seat. He's standing up uh, on the MS2 seat right now, and he'll uh, use some handholds up forward to help him get into position. And then Mike Good will make sure he's in the right position as he enters the seat. It's a little tricky getting in uh, without bumping any switches. Again, with that bulky suit on and uh, fairly small quarters, you want to make sure that you don't bump anything. All right, Lee's up and over the hump there and uh, put his feet down in the, in the uh, footwell. And... OTC, CBSA. Go ahead. Produced by Tubin Mofo 2.